Hello everyone, hope you guys are having a great day. It is April 9th, and today we do have an ongoing severe weather outbreak. Uh, we have a moderate risk going from southeastern Oklahoma, northeastern Texas, all the way into western Alabama. Uh, and already we, we have, a, we have had a, a bunch of really significant storms today of baseball-sized hail in some of them, and some very damaging winds. Uh, so yeah, let's get started. So yeah, we can see today we do have a moderate risk. We can take a look at the public severe weather outlook and see exactly where that moderate risk goes. So it goes from northeastern Texas down into central Mississippi and down into western Alabama. Cities in this is Jackson, Mississippi, Greenville, Monroe, uh, and Texarkana, all the way down to Hattiesburg and Meridian. Um, you guys are in that moderate risk. Um, and yeah, this this go this goes until seven a.m. tomorrow morning. Uh, that's how SBC outlooks work, or their convective outlooks. They go from 7 a.m., so today's day one outlook would have started at 7 a.m. this morning, and it goes until, so this this moderate, or this moderate risk convective outlook, this goes until uh, 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. So it even goes into Saturday morning, even though this is really Friday's outlook. Um, this is about to get updated. It gets updated in, at around uh, zero, or, or at around 9 p.m. 8 p.m. Central. Uh, sometimes it happens a little earlier than that. Sometimes it happens a little, a little bit later than that. Um, but yeah, so it's about to get updated, like I said. Um, but right now we do have a moderate risk that goes from northeastern Texas down in the Mississippi and Alabama. 10% SIG tornado risk. Uh, 45 SIG wind and a 30 SIG hail. Hail has been a big threat in Oklahoma and Texas, and wind is going to be a significant threat later tonight. Um, we could even have a derecho with this, which is not going to be good. We're going to have widespread damaging winds, and that could even continue into tomorrow. This is tomorrow's day two convective outlook. This is the outlook for tomorrow. We have a marginal risk curving all the way into Illinois, above our surface low, and going all the way down to the Gulf Coast. And yeah, we have an enhanced risk now for southeastern Louisiana into central Alabama. Cities in that, I think Montgomery is in that. Yeah, Montgomery, Mobile, Dothan, Pensacola, and Auburn is in that. Those are the cities in this enhanced risk. And the slight risk, we have New Orleans, Atlanta, Birmingham, Columbus, and Huntsville. Um, and then in the marginal, we have Columbus, Ohio, Chicago, Charlotte, North Carolina, Cleveland, Ohio, and Raleigh. Um, so a continuing severe weather risk tomorrow. And then even once again on Sunday, since the day three convective outlook, we have that marginal risk stretching from southeastern Virginia down into the, down into uh, central Florida. So a several day or a multi day severe weather event. We already we go to the storm reports to see what we already have. Yeah, it's been a very active day. We already have one hundred and sixty nine storm reports from today. Or no, not not one hundred and sixty nine total reports, but one hundred and sixty nine hail reports. That is very significant. This is probably one of the most significant and widespread hail events I've, I've seen in a while. Uh, we have 22 large hail reports. So what that means is that 22 reports of hail that is 2 inches or higher in diameter. So very significant sized hail. There's 22 reports of that going from Oklahoma down into Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, and even into southern Alabama we have reports of that. Uh, we have many hail reports in areas of uh, Virginia and North Carolina. And also some in southern Illinois and southern Missouri and into Arkansas. We have had 32 wind reports so far today, stretching all the way from Ohio down into uh, Virginia. And then we've had a few more in Missouri into Arkansas. And even in Mississippi and Alabama, we've had some also. So very active day, 201 total reports. I mean, I'm gonna, that number is going to go up. Uh, it's going to go up a lot. I'd expect we might even... We could even double that number, even triple it, uh, as we go through the night. And some of these reports, we can go. These are uh, hail reports here. Tennis ball size reported in Clark County, Alabama. Uh, golf ball size, hen egg size, the tennis ball size reported in, once again in Clark County, Alabama, which that is most likely, the or that's in southwestern Alabama, uh, and. Most significant significant wind report we've had. Or teacup size. Now that's three inch size hail in Russ County, Texas. That's also a significant size. And we haven't had any really significant wind reports, just standard wind reports. 
uh, wind damage. Uh, we haven't had any uh, high wind reports, which is 65 knots or higher. Uh, I, I'd expect we could have some uh, by tomorrow. And we're going to look at this uh, map again tomorrow. Um, but already, it's been a very active day for severe weather. We see what we have going on now. It's just a ton of storms. We have a complex that's in the, uh, the eastern gulf here. We have more storms in Virginia and North Carolina. Some isolated storms in between those. And the main event is back here. And we also have a ton of storms in front of that. Just really cold cloud tops with these storms in Tennessee, Kentucky, Mississippi, North Carolina, not North Carolina, I'm sorry, Louisiana, Arkansas, and Texas. I don't know where I got North Carolina from. Um, we also have our main event still back there in uh, Oklahoma and Kansas. So yeah, it's a very active night. Uh, we go to the NAM model. And th this this is just going to continue tomorrow. We go to, uh, this is, actually, let's go, to, let's go to 8Z. This is 8Z tomorrow morning, so this is around 3 a.m. We have very strong storms in Louisiana, Mississippi, uh, Alabama, with likely very damaging winds with these. Not very damaging, but damaging winds, and even a few embedded tornadoes are likely. Let's take a sounding at 08Z in some areas of here. Let's take one. Let's take one in southern Mississippi. See what kind of environment we have for tornadoes. Yeah, this is good for tornadoes. We have really nice shear. That that is like great shear. Uh, it is a little capped, and we don't have a whole lot of instability. But instability is manageable. Um, but that hodo though is nice. This will definitely support a tornado, maybe even a strong one. I'd say this 10 sig that is right here is gonna be. And I don't think it's going to bust. Uh, I think it's well called for with the type of environment we have. Really nice hodos. And, I mean, yeah, that's pretty much this. Let's go to the eastern uh, Louisiana. Yep, we, this is a PDS tornado sign. Let's not, let's not look at that, though. Uh, we have a little bit more instability with this. That could kind of help. This, this, is, this, is, this is late at night, though. Having almost 3,000 Cape is significant this late at night. That is... Really significant. This sounding is also very surface based. Uh, and that hodo looks great. Critical angle 64 also. This is going to support a tornado risk. For sure. I'd say uh, the best tornado risk looks to be this area here. Um, now, that, that, I'm, not, I'm not saying that. Uh, like, we're, that's the only area we're going to see tornadoes. No, it's, it's completely possible we're going to see tornadoes outside of that area. And for fact, it's likely. But that's kind of the area that has the best environment tonight for tornadoes. It goes from western Alabama down to uh, kind of eastern Louisiana. So, yeah. Now, this is 15Z here. Or not 15Z. This is a forecast hour 15. Oh, 09Z. This is getting in. This is around 4 a.m. Still a very strong line moving east uh, and through almost New Orleans, uh, down through Jackson, and coming into the Tuscaloosa area soon. Uh, we go to 5 a.m. here. Still, see, that line is still very strong. We take a sounding in front of it. So, might, yeah, let's, let's get a new one. Yeah, so, here we go. This one's not contaminated. Very good tornado environment. Now, this hodo looks, like, really great. Nice uh, curve to that, and it's very enlarged also. Critical angle is 54. We do have really nice shear, once again, and plenty of instability. It is slightly capped, but I'm not thinking that that is going to be a problem. Um, overall, the only thing really limiting the tornado risk for this is, I mean, we don't have the greatest shear ever. We do have plenty of it, though. And we, do, we're not gonna, we may not have the correct storm mode. Supercells are better at producing tornadoes, of course. Um, and it's likely we're going to have a linear line in this area with maybe an embedded supercell. I don't, kind of uncertain about that. Uh, but we could even have, we're probably going to have some tornadoes inside of this line as it moves to the east. And we continue going. Let's go to 7 a.m. here. And these times, I'm saying these are central time. Uh, so if you live in the eastern time zone, this would actually be 8 a.m. But this is Saturday at 12 east, so 7 a.m. Uh, let's take a sounding in southern Alabama. Still a great tornado environment. Look at that hodo, though. Not We have plenty of instability, around 1,500. Um, 67 dew point. Very moist sounding. And just not a whole lot limiting the tornado threat with this, other than the fact that 
we don't have the right storm in. But I, I think with with some of these or with, with some of these soundings, we're likely going to see some tornadoes, uh, even though this is mainly going to be a linear line. We also the chance is always out there that we could maybe see some storms fire in front of this line. Problem is, is we might have some capping that, that could kind of limit that. Um, but still, this is just significant. Now at 12 Z, this is 7 a.m. It does the Nam three indicates it weakening a little bit. Uh, we go to the H triple R and see how the H triple R is different. H triple R, <laughs> that's that's much different. Very str much stronger line though. This right here, just by looking at the look of that and the punch that that would have, that would have winds of seventy miles per hour with it. That's a classic to ratio right there. And still, the H triple R does have a nice tornado environment. Uh, it, it, the H triple R shows a stronger line though. Uh, thirteen Z tomorrow. We can see it's 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 kind of maintaining strength still. This is our uh, sun is rising at this time. It's around eight a.m. Uh, as it comes through Birmingham and approaches Montgomery. This sounding here is, yeah, that's not great. Bashir is there. It's just the other ingredients. Just yeah, once again, that's terrible. Terrible through dynamics. Uh. But still, nice line. I'll see what the H triple R has. A main, the main difference between the H triple R and the NAM is the H triple R, or the NAM three. I'm sorry, the H triple R has a much stronger line, and it has it further to the south. So, for example, the line in the H triple R kind of goes like this. The one in the NAM three kind of goes like this. Uh, it, the NAM three has a more has it moving more east, while the H triple R has it moving more to the southeast, and the NAM three has. Of course, a weaker line. Uh, and I mean, I'm, I'm even thinking that the NAM 3 may, might have a better tornado environment than the HRRR here. We take some soundings off the HRRR. I'll we'll stick one right in front of this in the panhandle. Not a great tornado environment. This is, yeah, this we could still get a tornado out of this for sure. Not saying that this is, you can't get a tornado out of this, but shear isn't as good. The hodo is not as good. And just overall, not as great of a sounding. Uh, the H triple R does have more instability, uh, so that can be something to watch. And yeah, so let's go back to the NAM three. Fourteen Z tomorrow lines really starting to weaken in northern Alabama and central Alabama. Still a damaging wind threat, just not as extreme as for to the south. And I'll see what the H triple R has at this time. Probably a much yeah, it still has really damaging winds in central Alabama, southern Alabama, the Florida Panhandle. And even extreme southern and southeastern Louisiana, uh, still a significant, significant event during this time here. I'll skip ahead to sixteen Z. Sorry, this is later in the afternoon. Uh, this is kind of or not in the afternoon. This is kind of a late morning, almost noon here. We can see our line has significantly weakened. You have really a not even a line here anymore, and most of the storms are limited to Florida Panhandle, and maybe some redevelopment. So maybe some single cells or multi cells in uh, western Alabama into maybe uh, eastern Louisiana could see that. Let's go to the H triple R see what it has. H triple R is kind of a similar story, a broken line moving into Georgia. H triple R does have this moving faster though. The Nam three had it further to the west, uh, and it had it moving slower. While the H triple R is moving faster, uh, with probably. This is going to be a stronger line if it happens like the H triple R's, uh, or H triple R solution is showing. Seventeen Z in the H triple R, we can see that line starts to break up in southwestern Georgia. Still a damaging wind threat. That's about it though, and maybe some pretty or, or some significant damaging wind still in the Florida Panhandle, coming up towards Tallahassee. As we go later in the afternoon, this is eighteen Z. This is mid afternoon here. North Georgia not really getting a whole lot as this line breaks up. Central and southern Georgia, though, getting some action. Uh, likely just gusty winds, though. And the Florida Panhandle, the central Florida Panhandle, still getting uh, maybe some damaging winds with that. So this is tomorrow looks to be a uh, pretty interesting day, and tonight especially. Uh, very dangerous, potentially. I'm not going to really say uh, the D word yet, but... Potentially a derecho. Uh It's kind of uncertain at this time, but if it happens like the H triple R is showing, it, it, it'll be one. 
Um, yeah, this is a sounding kind of in the afternoon. We don't have as good shear anymore. Hodo looks not that great for tornadoes. You could still get a weaker tornado out of this. It's not as great of an environment. I'd say best tornado risk tonight looks to be this area. Best tornado risk Saturday morning looks to be southern Alabama and the Florida Panhandle. Uh, and, of course, tonight's tornado risk looks a little bit better. And that kind of worries me with some of those soundings. This isn't over. Most of these tornadoes, will, if, if they happen, will likely be rain-wrapped. And this is happening during the nighttime, which that's just going to make things even worse. So that's a dangerous situation setting up right there. Um, hoping we don't have any tornadoes tonight, but it may not happen like that. Uh, but yeah, so let's go ahead and look at next week real quick. Not going to talk about it too much, but I want to talk about next week real quick. Because uh, that's something, it's kind of cool to uh, look at models like the GFS and the Euro and kind of... Uh, Look at trends for net for a week out, and see really where you could see severe weather. Really, where you could see severe weather happen. So we're gonna look at next week, which next week is the 11th through the 18th. Um, this is the this is what we have Saturday. We have our uh, convection kind of in this area here. This is Saturday afternoon. We have our upper level low right there, and. Also, I want to take a sounding maybe right here. Well, yeah, yeah, that doesn't look too good. All right. So, yeah, let's take a look at next week here. This is the GFS. We're going to switch back to the European and see what we have. This is the 500 mil of our uh, winds. I like to look at this for pointing out or for really just seeing what kind of pattern we have and where could we really see severe weather. Uh, this is good for long range forecasting. Um, so this is uh, April 12th. This is next Monday. Not really long range. This is kind of medium. Uh, we can see not a great pattern for severe weather. Really zonal uh, flow, actually. Not really that good looking for any severe weather. Uh, we got the Tuesday, though. We start to get maybe a, a trough starting to dig into the west. And this moving into the... Northeast, maybe a, sp a split flow pattern that's starting to get going. Uh, and Wednesday afternoon we have, or Wednesday, this is Wednesday evening, Wednesday, eight, Wednesday April 14th. Uh, we have this uh, trough start, or this uh, maybe a cutoff low or an upper level low that's starting to uh, dig into the west. The location of this really hasn't changed much since yesterday's video. It's centered right around uh, the border of. Idaho, Nevada, and Utah, kind of right around that uh, area, and one something over the northeast. This is once again not a great pattern for severe weather. Uh, this area looks to be maybe the most interesting, but still not great. Uh, no severe weather outbreaks here. Now, one thing you want to pay, pay attention for is you don't just want to look at 500, 500 MB winds, because uh, some events can maybe kind of slip under this and maybe not look great at all on 500 MB winds. Uh, that's that's why I only like using this to point out uh, t trends that are far out, like a week out. Uh, or pointing out like maybe future severe weather uh, outbreaks. So this is this is next Friday that uh, low moves to the east. This is Friday evening on the 16th. We have still not a great setup for severe weather. I'm not liking the looks of that. And Saturday, still not great. Um, next week looks to be rather calm for severe weather, uh, to be honest. We go to, let's go to dew points and see what kind of moisture we have next week. Uh, it's going to take a while. Pivotal weather has been kind of slow uh, for the past couple of days. Slower than usual. This is next Tuesday afternoon. We have most of the moisture for severe weather. Limited to Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi. Uh, we do have maybe some kind of front, maybe a stationary front set up in this area here. Uh, maybe bringing some thunderstorm activity here. Not really, it doesn't look too severe at this point. Uh, Wednesday next week, we see we have a little bit of moisture return moving into Texas. Dew is in the 60s and 50s moving into some areas. Still not great. Uh, we do have, yeah, still, still not a great setup. Uh, for any severe weather, really. 
and Thursday evening. Have a surface low coming into the Oklahoma and Texas panhandles. Uh, in front of this, we have not really not moist air. Uh, we do have some rather or some more, more moist air than we had a few days ago. Dews in the 50s and the 60s. Moving into the Texas panhandle. Maybe you could get some severe weather right in this area. Uh, it kind of depends. That may be an area to watch uh, next Thursday. And keep in mind, this is a week out, so this is next Friday. You can see that surface low really doesn't do a whole lot. Maybe some kind of event in this area. Or not, I don't know why it's true. Maybe some kind of event in this area. Not looking too great next week for any severe weather outbreaks or anything like that. Um, but yeah, that wraps up this video here. Wait a second, let's check this out. Uh, like I said earlier in the video, the new convective outlet comes out at 9. Uh, let's see if it is out. Yep, it is out. So this is the new convective outlook. This is different than the one we saw at the beginning of the video. Uh, we have a mo we have our mortar our moderate risk. Gosh, sorry, going from uh, northeastern Louisiana into western Alabama. Our enhanced risk going from eastern Oklahoma into the Florida Panhandle and into central Alabama. Two slight risks are one in the south, our big one, and we have another one. With that complex of storms in North Carolina and Virginia, marginal risk extending from those two areas through South Carolina, Georgia, and back to where we could see our ratio tonight. 10 sig tornado risk still in that area of Mississippi and Alabama. 45 sig wind threat that's really significant. A 30 sig wind or 30 sig hail threat uh, also still. Or, yeah, also. So with this new convective outlook, not much has changed. Uh, just the moderate risk has been shrinked a little bit. Um, but it really doesn't mean that much. Still a significant severe weather event. Uh, but yeah, they're up in this video. I'm sorry I can't live stream tonight. I don't have a lot of time. Um, but yes, goodbye.